In order to properly compare the populations of northwestern salamanders throughout the Olympic Peninsula, I have to collect genetic and morphological data to make a proper analysis. While genetic data is readily accessible through egg masses and larvae, which prove to be reliably found, this becomes an issue when the adults of the species are heavily secretive and their surface activity is restricted to very particular times of the year. Previous trips that I've been on to collect such data have been relatively successful in genetic collection. However, I've been failing in finding adults at high elevations, so I need to do something about this. The problem with most of these trips is that we've been going at the wrong times to find the adults. So my mission is to find out what the best time of the year is to find them at the higher elevations. I started by compiling observations of all Ambistoma gracilii in my study area. I've previously half-assed this undertaking the past few years, but I decided to finally lock in and produce something more reliable. At first, I individually scoured iNaturalist observations and museum records on websites like vertnet.com, but I soon remembered GBIF, or the Global Biodiversity Information Facility. This made all the raw data I needed available at the click of the mouse and saved me a couple more hours of data collecting. This was far from the end of the job though. To determine seasonality, I also tried finding historical weather data. What I ended up jumbling together for this part is pretty sketchy, but it was still helpful in a sense as you'll see. I also used time data, coloration, and life stages, since these are pivotal in the comparisons between the different populations of the salamander. After I sorted this data some more and added observations from my own experiences in the field, I've come up with this PDF document with every observation of Ambistoma gracilii in the Olympic Peninsula that I could find. So let's take a look. A majority of the data is old. 45 out of 79 observations were collected before the 2000s. And there are many gaps in time, such as between the 1980s and the 2010s. It's possible there's data out there that can fill these gaps, but I'm not sure where I'd find it. The low amount of specimens that are recorded during the nighttime is likely due to the fact that not many people are out and about in the mountains during these times. This could also be due to the fact that day and night data could only be determined from around 32 out of 79 of the occurrences, and only 17 out of 79 had specific times assigned to them. Either way, this suggests that they are found in the daytime to an extent, even adults. Additionally, adults who were found in association with rainfall 8 out of 13 times, and in some that weren't, rainfall occurred quite recently. While this is obvious in what stimulates breeding migrations in the spring, this also provides a reason why adults become surface active in harsher times of the year like the summer. However, in order to successfully find an adult, we need to find out when they'll be out 100%, or at least as close to that as possible. While we now know that adult surface activity seems to be stimulated by precipitation, when can we catch them in their peak activity during the breeding season? Ambistima gracilii are known to breed while snow is still even on the ground. So just like in Goldilocks, we need to find which time of the season is just right. Only so much can be interpreted from my locality data in this case. At a loss, I decided to use trail reviews over the years to see what conditions look like during the beginning of the season. Using the Washington Trail Association trail reviews for one of my sites, I determined what the conditions were like based off of descriptions and attached pictures. This was the best way to determine seasons in the area lacking reliable weather stations. A lot of them provide photos which are perfect for visually imagining a salamander would be surface active. So what did the hikers have to say? Well, it seems like snow seems to block passage on trails even in early June. The first week of July sees the lake ice in the basin begin to melt, still with plenty of snow, but that doesn't bother the salamanders. The second and third week of July see further melting and look prime. The timing seems to deviate sometimes, such as 2019 conditions being suitable by mid-June. Therefore, checking trail conditions following surveys will be prime. Overall, it seems my data collection from these sources have helped me get a better understanding of what time exactly I should go out to look for these guys. This just goes to show what can be done with data that's already readily accessible on the internet. 